really enjoyed watching the debate the other night from the main um, candidates, yourself, alongside Sarah Gideon, Susan Collins, and another independent candidate, Max Lynn. Uh, I just wanted to get your perspective. What was it like being up there on the debate stage? I mean, you've been in this race for a little bit now, but it seems like it's it's really now uh, official now that we've had a real debate in Maine. Yes, that's right. And today I saw myself in my first political cartoon, so that makes it more official to me, too. It was a political cartoon about how Max Lynn was kind of clowning around quite a bit, and the three women are kind of just, you know, <laughs> waiting for him to wind down. That's um, okay, yeah. Well, his tactic to break through clutter was interesting. And, and Rachel, that's an excellent question. But as I mentioned, I've got to be way outside the box tonight. I have to be different because I'm competing against the hundred million dollars. And so I'm going to put your question aside and I have a bombshell to announce tonight. You know, right now. I would ask if, that you stick with the question. If well, you... uh, request denied. It, it was really interesting. And of course, we've seen this dynamic play out many times with progressive candidates versus more establishment candidates, you know, during the, the debates in the presidential level, we saw candidates like Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, consistently give really good policy, um, rooted answers about helping people and, you know, making sure that money is redistributed into the hands of the disenfranchised communities of this country. Uh, and then, you know, of course, his opponents, like I said, with your opponents often would just kind of resort to their standard cliches and, you know, uh, kind of talking and almost kind of tricking their voters. You know, when, when, when people say, oh, well, I'm also in favor of uh, universal health care. I'm in favor of just a for, I'm in favor of affordable health care for everyone. It's like, well, you know, maybe what's affordable to Sarah Gideon is not affordable to your average Mainer. And a lot of people can't afford health care. And that's what I, I just think is so infuriating when, um, you know, someone like you comes to the debate stage with a clear policy sub substance answer. This is what I want to do. This is the policy that everyone needs. This is the clear right thing. And then, um, you know, your opponents just kind of obfuscate with uh, cliches and stump speech language and without really even saying anything on a policy level. Um, have you, you know, had a good response to those answers? Do, do you think that people, uh, you know, saw in that debate performance what they wanted to see and heard uh, the answers that they felt that they needed to hear as voters and as citizens of Maine? Because we don't believe that corporate government is going to solve the problems that we're facing in this country. They profit from the problems that we're facing in this country. Um, and so it's, you know, when people in Maine are struggling to get by and they don't have a voice in the Senate because every, I'm the only non-millionaire up here. Well, we've had a huge positive response to my performance in the debate, mostly around you were the only one that answered the questions, you were super clear, and you told us the issues, you know, that you favor and that, that we agree with. We had a huge influx of donations. We've had a large influx of new volunteers and just support pouring in um, from all over Maine, which is important because, uh, you know, only Mainers can vote for us. Yeah. And so it was very gratifying. Lots and lots of people that I used to work with, you know, I've been a uh -huh. teacher for many years in Maine. So many people reached out that I hadn't heard from in a while and said, <laughs> wow, that was great. Um, so I, it definitely helped us a lot. Most of the uh, journalism in response to it focused on, you know, the spectacle of the clash between the two corporate parties, but we always got a mention, and it was usually a very positive mention, like, you know, they were used words like impressive. You know, some people said she was the only adult on the stage. <laughs> One of the funny comments, I did not see it, but I met someone at the Lewiston Farmer's Market a couple days later, and he said, oh, the best online comment while I was watching it was someone said, I kept expecting Max Lynn and his prom date, Sarah Gideon, to leave and let the two grown-ups continue their conversation. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really think that Sarah Gideon or Susan Collins' yeah. performance in the debate were super different. Although Susan Collins uh, mentioned me by name twice and said, "I agree with Lisa on this." Oh, that wow. surprised me. I'm That's interpreting cool. it as kind of a dig at Gideon, but I'm in the position in this race where I'll take anybody's number two rankings, and it behooves me to not negatively campaign against any of the other three yeah. because. I don't want to alienate their supporters who might very well rank me second. Yeah, and that's another um, positive about ranked choice voting that a lot of people have pointed out is that it actually discourages that super divisive negative campaigning because like you said, you're trying to get that second place ranking on uh, you know the voters of Lynn and Gideon and um, Susan Collins. So of course you're going to want to um, you know appease, they're not appease, it's not like you're trying to get their voters necessarily, but 
I mean, you're offering them things that are going to benefit them as well. The policies you're advocating for, humanistic policies, populist policies that ultimately are the, you know, smart humanistic answers, in my opinion. Um, is there going to be another debate or is that, was it just like a one time? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. no, several more debates. Uh, the next one is on Monday, September 28th in Presque Isle, which is very, very far up in northern Maine. This would be Susan Collins, you know, kind of home stomping grounds at a TV station there. I think it's the NBC affiliate, which also sponsored this last debate. And, um, and there are others uh, also uh, in October. I am unclear on how many of the debates will occur early enough in the season to really affect voting because Maine is a no excuse absentee voting state. So hundreds of thousands of us have already requested an absentee ballot yeah. and will be, and that when that comes in the mail around the first week of October is when it's supposed to arrive in the mail, we, we can go ahead and vote then turn it into our town clerk. I plan on carrying mine by hand because you know, I, I can support the post office in many ways, but I'm not entrusting my absentee ballot to them this year since they've been so much under attack from a, a Trump administration. So I'm not sure, you know, uh, debates that are later in October, I'm sure some voters will go in person on November 3rd. But with the pandemic, you know, Maine's been pretty good on keeping our, uh, you know, curve flat on COVID-19 infections. But we had this one unfortunate wedding in northern Maine that has now infected hundreds of people oh. through secondary and tertiary there have been five deaths attributed to it. It spread to a jail way far away in southern Maine. So I think many people, I think they'll have a hard time finding uh, election workers. Election workers tend to be retirees. They're the most vulnerable. And I think that many, many people will just go ahead and vote absentee because, you know, why wouldn't you? So I'm not sure that the later debates will do much to change the race, but we will participate in every debate we're invited to. We had a petition on our website is still up there saying let Lisa debate and we've had a series of petitions yep. on issues like Medicare for all um, right now we're running one let Lisa ask about Lisa in the polls because polls often ignore ranked choice voting ignore but a thousand people signed the let Lisa debate petition within you know three days and um, it's clear that voters want to hear from all the candidates in a ranked choice voting election and I think people that organize debates or polls and purposely exclude uh, people who are, you know, candidates whose names will be on the ballot are doing a disservice to voters.